Good morning YouTube and the internet. Well, after a couple of days of driving the Corolla, despite the fact it passed this road weather, the brakes are terrible. Um, and I think I know why. I'll give you a closer look in a minute, but if you look in here, this is we've done several hundred kilometers. Um, back road driving, highway driving, everything, and we've still got rust and crap on the brake rotor here. The brake pad feels very wooden, like it's sort of stiff. It doesn't give you a lot of deceleration. Now I know they're old brakes, but it is a brake bursted car. So, a couple of obvious reasons. One would be a vacuum leak for the brake burster, which I think is unlikely. Two would be the calipers are stuck, so they're just not pushing in on the rotor. And you can see, like all the rusty stuff is sort of still there in certain sections, and there's grooves in other areas. So I'm going to whip them off, whip those wheels off, and have a bit of a look at the brakes. Um, see how much meat there is on the pad. The pad is probably ancient, and it's probably a terrible brake medium to begin with, but I think it's more of a mechanical thing of the, the caliper not closing up. So let's have a look. So with the wheel off we get a much closer look and we, you can see here, clearly nothing is rubbing on this, uh, otherwise it would have worn off by now. Now, if we look in the end here, see there appears to be plenty of actual pad material, at least on one side. And then looking through the back here, you can see there's plenty of meat on this one too, but you can also see that the pad extends well past this rust line, so it really should be shiny down about here. It's about five miles short of that, so I don't think this pad is being pushed in to the rotor at all. Uh, this is a good chance to have a look around in here. This boot's been replaced at some point. Steering rack. Boot is in decent condition, albeit a bit loose. Everything else looks alright. That I can see from here. So... We need to undo the caliper and have a bit of a look down here. There's a bolt, that one. Up here there's a bolt, there's this one. So I'm just going to undo the bottom one entirely, loosen this one, rotate that up. So this one undone, this one just loose, pull that out. We can just lever this up. Hopefully it'll clear. Nah, it's sitting on the... Fuck. That hurt. This is guillotine the end of my finger. Okay, so we can't just lever it up and off because the clash is up the top. So let's get this bolt out and uh, hang the caliper on something so we don't have to undo the brake line because that would be annoying. How cool is this though? This little brake cooling duct system. So this is to draw air in from uh, around the wheel and direct it into the rotor. And you can see on the rotor on the back side it's much shinier. Um, which tells me there's a lot of contact going on on here. Whether it's enough I don't know. But there's definitely more friction on the back side of this rotor than the front. Um, which again reinforces my sticky caliper theory. So let's get this one out and pull this off. So with the caliper up here just hang on a bit of speaker wire because that's what I happen to have laying about um, yeah we've got much more contact patch on the back than on the front the piston is on this side what usually happens is so the piston will push this in this side and there should be a, like a slide mechanism for the other side to come into it which is here and here allows uh, sort of movement on this side to push back that way. So I'd say they're just stuck. The pads are not as old 
crusty as I thought. So we're going to have to undo the nipple and uh, free the caliper from the car. Have a good look. So we've got our brake caliper sitting here on the workbench. I clamped off the line on the brakes and I'm trying to figure out how to pull this apart. Now quite clearly we've got a bolt here, it's 12mm. So maybe if I undo that I can rotate it. It's maybe like a bayonet style fitting. Let's find out. on this ratchet. No. So it wasn't reverse thread, I just put it in the vise, got some more contra force on it. She came undone. Easy as that. will come off if I rotate it. Okay, so doesn't appear to be any real binding in here. The shafts look alright. This one looks okay. And it can never hurt to have more lubrication but certainly looks to have been moving fairly freely. Inside the boot on this one, oh, actually this one looks a bit crappy. Push this out? Yeah, I can. So in this one, obviously the bolt goes through the middle. There's a bit of debris in there, but not a lot. Well, I flush it out with some WD and uh, reassemble it and just give it a few cycles. And then, if it's free, uh, reinstall and bleed the brakes. Because maybe it was air trapped somewhere. Obviously, I got to bleed them because I've undone the nipple anyway. Um, if that doesn't work, I'll try swapping the pads out. Maybe the rotors are glazed on that side. It's always not. It's always possible. But it doesn't look like that should be stuck. So I've just flushed out all of the parts, all the moving bits, and cleaned them up with a bit of WD. So. So scoring, there's no debris on that. Uh, there was a little bit of very fine debris inside this. I doubt it would have that impact, but she's uh, spotless now. Cleaned up this bolt. Flooded these as well. In there, through there. So I'm just going to put it back together uh, with some new grease. And put it back on the car. Repeat the process on this one. And then we'll uh, see if that makes a difference. Obviously, I'm going to be re-bleeding the system, so maybe with air, but air doesn't make give you that wooden feeling. So perhaps, perhaps they were a little bit sticky. Uh, I'm getting braking power, so I don't think it's the actual caliper piston that's stuck. But obviously, I'm going to have to I'm going to push it all the way back in and see how it feels. All right, let's do that right now. So I'm lucky, I've got a vise, so I can do it like this, but if you don't, you can just use a large set of multi grips. So you can put the pads and caliper back together. It feels pretty good. This is obviously pushing all the old fluid out. No grinding, no grunch, no binding that I could feel. I suppose now would be the perfect time to paint them. I'm not going to do that right now. That'll probably be a later video. Let's get this um, back together and on the car and repeat it on the other one. See if it makes a difference. So because this uh, bolt here slides inside this sleeve, 
pre-pack this. Use the bolt. Ooh, look at that slugger. Oh, a bit of shit came out. So that's a good way to get the last of the shit out. Let's uh, throw that on that rag. Just make sure it's well lubricated internally. Both the bolt and the inside of the sleeve need to be well lubricated to allow the moving parts to move. There was some grease on it. There was not an excess of grease on it. Was there enough grease on it? Mm -hmm, don't know. Was there so little grease it should bind? No, but that's fine. So that's that. And we'll get some on here. I haven't take undone this. Obviously if you undo this you'd be able to pull the sleeve off, but there's no movement on the inside of this one, unlike the other one. So we just need to lube up. Grease the outside. Make sure it's fully encased. Like so. Definitely want some grease inside here. Down inside these boots. shy with it, if it's too much, it'll just push back out the hole when you put it back together and you clean it off with a rag. With all these jobs where I've got two of the same part, don't undo the second part before you finish putting the first part back together, if you can, or if you're worried about uh, how to put it back together, because quite simply, I can copy that one. So the bolt holes are at the top. That lines up with that. I think it just came off like so. Just going to gently work that into there. All the way in. Let's go through from this side. This is catching on the lip. There we go. Don't want to tear the boots, obviously. Big slug of grease I don't need. Said it would just push it out if it didn't need it. If there was too much in there. Make sure our boot comes all the way to the end of the sleeve and snaps into that little groove. So this is the action that allows this part of the caliper to move. Basically this being able to slide back and forwards. Same on this side, it slides. It slides. Like that. In and out. Last but not least, slip her bolt in, line her up, tighten the bolt, and we are good. A bit of excess grease there, pull that out, because we don't want grease on our brake pads, clean up all the excess for the same reason. And there we have it, one reassembled caliper and that one's ready to go back on the car and I'll do the other one quickly we'll slam it back on take it for a test drive see if that makes a difference so as demonstrated by slave child one here um, on his one that he's doing after watching me do mine this has some very unusual dry hard bindy patches on it so on this one Binding could definitely be explained by that. You want to pull that sleeve out of that? Yeah, that one. Just push it right through from one side to the other. There you go. And then turn and pull. There you go. Well, let's look at the inside of this. You probably can't see it. It looks very dry in there. I can see a little bit of faint scoring. So I would say this side was definitely bound up. And maybe that was enough for the brake feel. So just going to rinse and repeat, flush and clean with WD, and then grease and reassemble. Obviously clean. So flushing this with WD has gotten rid of some of this build up of whatever it is, but we're just going to give it a bit of a wire brush to get the rest of it off. Okay, so we're nice and shiny. 
Let's say what's happening is some brake fluid or something similar, some sort of solvent has been dropped on it which has stripped the protective coating off it and it's been left ungreased because it was, it was dry inside that assembly. There was no lubrication whatsoever so put a grease on it, it'll be fine. And we can put it back together, exactly the same as the other one. I'm going to let Slave Child 1 put this one together because he has to drive it so if it fails it's his fault and he's the one in the fiery car accident instead of me. So before we put a caliper back on, um, these are definitely glazed. The pads were glazed. I've just roughed them up with a small wire brush. You do not do this with new pads because they have a bedding compound on them which is designed to bed onto the rotor. But this rotor, you can see the pitting here from where it's been rusty and when we've started driving it, all we've done is scrape the rust around and glaze the rotor. So I've given that a bit of a hit with WD. Now, um, there's two shredded holes here. All you need to do, if this doesn't work, is screw in a bolt there and there, and it'll pull the rotor off. But first, we'll just give the old hammery hammer a bit of a go. I don't know if this will work, because these are on here for a long time. Don't hit the rotor with the metal end. So hitting it with the hammer didn't work. So we'll fall back to the bolt through the whole technique. And that is the sound of success. So these have just been on here so long that they've rusted. So all I want to do with these, I'm not going to replace them. They look like they've got plenty of meat. I could get the micrometer on it, or the vernies on it, and check. But I think they're okay, thickness-wise. For some reason, the two M8 bolts I have have a different sized head. So I've got to keep swapping. But this is how we can pull this off. And we'll give this rotor a bit of a wire brush, get the excess rust off it, hit it with some brake cleaner, make sure it's a nice clean surface for the pads to bed onto. And we'll be golden. It could be skimmed, but right now I'm just looking to make sure that the pad feel is corrected with this, and we can look at replacing rotors if needed at a later date. So, what I've done here is I have merely, just to try and clean off some of the rust, gone around it with a wire brush in around these edges and on the outer lip, same on this side, and then just to try and clear some of the glazing off, put a 120 sandpaper. You see I haven't gone very deep because there's still a little bit of rust pitting here. This really should be uh, skimmed, be a rotor skimmed, but it's a Sunday and I don't have time for that. So that is what I'm going with, just a clean, bare metal sort of surface. Um, we want to hit this with some brake cleaner before we put it on, which I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, that's simply just cleaning off the glazing from the old pads and the rust and everything else. So the, the pad that I've just scrapped, scuffed the top off with the wire brush has something fresh to bond to and bed to. Um, yeah, this is not a new brake rotor, they're not new pads. The purpose of what I'm doing is to check for the that woody feeling and see if that was the calipers binding. And it may have also been the glazing on the rotor, uh, which just meant there was no bite, despite how much pedal pressure put on. So, if that fixes it up, this may only be a temporary solution. Maybe the new rotors go on and new pads go on at a low stage. But to test that now, this is how I'm going to clean these up along with the scuffed pads and give them a test, bed them in and then drive it to work tomorrow and see how they feel. Obviously there's going to be new fluid in it because uh, I'm going to have to bleed a lot of the fluid out and a lot of the fluid came out when I undid the lines so um, the fluid question will also be solved in the process. So the only thing that will be left will be a vacuum leak or the brake booster failed. Um, it doesn't feel like a brake booster failure though but Maybe it's a combination, not sure. Um, we'll see how that goes. 
hopefully that fixes it and then I'll know well I don't have to do anything this will, these will just clear up with a good flat surface and good bite from the uh, pads and calipers moving forward so to prepare the hub to receive the tidied up rotor make sure our pads and everything are out of the way just going to hit this again with WD just going to loosen up a bit more of the rust that's on there and then just wipe it with a rag to clean it off we're not looking at a perfect surface we're just looking to prevent it rusting straight back on to the hub because I may have to take them off again in the near future or in the far future but that's pretty reasonable like that and then the real preventative bit nickel anti-seize lubricant any metal based copper lubricant will be fine normal grease will do the job this stuff's pretty good we just put it on the face of the hub just to prevent it rusting to the hub and to the base of the studs basically slip her on she is a tight fit so since that's being an ass I'll just hit it with the face of the hammer so the wheel nuts will hold that in place that's, it is a floating rotor, it just sits here like that. Uh, when the wheel goes on and you torque the wheel down, everything's locked into place. And when the caliper's on, it, it can't come off either. So, let's just get off our excess nickel. Okay, now we're all gloved up. Some brake cleaner. And we'll do the inside first. Can't turn the wheel, because it's locked. The steering lock's on. So, Pull this up out of the way. And just give this a spray. And now this side. Let it run off, it'll vaporize really quickly, and that'll be a nice clean surface for the pad to stick into. Brake cleaner, that's what it's designed to do. Finally on the hose stretch, let's pop our pads back in our caliper, clean, wearing gloves. These particular pads don't seem to have an inside and an outside, there's no wear indicator. So. So like a lot of things car related, it's much easier to do when you don't have to find a camera angle to film it. So, pads are in, this will slip straight on. Just take your bolts out. Uh, is this the right caliper? Is this for this side? Yep, bleed nipple at the top. Always bleed nipple at the top. The reason for that is the air will rise to the top of the chamber making it easier to bleed out of the system one in there as you can see we're on top and bottom bleeding over to the top just got to tighten that up put this brake line back on here and uh, pop the wheel back on ready to give it a test drive now while I've got the gloves on I'll do the other side, um, I've already put the rotor on and cleaned it, but I'll put the caliper on the other side now, and the reason I'm going to do that before putting the, the, the brake line back on this side is because I don't want brake fluid on my hands when I'm playing with the rotor and caliper and pads on the other side. So, time for a test drive, um, simply bolted the calipers back on, gave them a good bleed, got a lot of very watery looking brake fluid out of the lines uh, obviously a fair bit of air because shit was undone um, but once that came through it was pretty clear and clean so we've taken the bleed and pour fluid out of the equation as well 
Uh, so now we're going to go and try and bed these brakes in. Uh, now that they're clean and scuffed and should have uh, decent surfaces in contact. And see how they perform now compared to what they performed like before. I think better will be the answer. But we'll see. Alright, well I've done a couple of um, progressively faster and faster brake stops on the way to the motorway. The brake response is a lot better. The pedal feel is um, sort of better. But I think there's still a little bit of air in it. I haven't bled it quite enough. Because the pedal's just a little bit long. Now that could be because a little bit of air got pulled up into the line before I got the clamps on or whatever and it didn't all come out but um, I'm going to do a couple of bigger, harder stops soon um, 100k an hour ones really get the brakes up to temp and then drive on the motorway back home so I did some 40s, some 60s and some 80s before I got onto the on-ramp I'm just going to let the brake temp come back down and then we'll do some bigger stops uh, on a private road which is not far from here and um, yeah that'll get them well and truly bedded in by the time I'm driven home once they're cooled down again they should be it and then um, just a bit of a bleed and we'll be good to go this is my exit alrighty test drive went pretty well the brake performance is definitely a little bit better um, pedal is not hard but it's a little bit long so either we didn't get all the air out when we bled the fronts or alternatively now that the caliper is actually moving and it's not stuck what we can feel is air in the back or just the lack of performance old fluid or whatever from the back brake so all I'm going to do is bleed all of them um, standard practice go from the farthest away from the brake master cylinder so start rear left then rear right then front left then front right brake bleeding is pretty easy I'm pretty sure I've got detailed videos of it up in the past you should be able to find it um, yeah that should be the last job it's now dark outside so when this is done I'll take it for another drive uh, let's have a look at these rotors actually nice and even yep that looks good. And yeah, that looks good. So I think we're good. Um, I think it's definitely helped. Whether it was the glazing or the stuck caliper, I'm not sure. But both have been taken care of, it feels like. And this should uh, just shorten that pedal up because it was just a little bit long. Also, it did get it quite hot, so... There's a little bit of that, but I did drive it on the motorway to cool it down, and it was still a little bit on the long side when I got home. So, quick bleed, we'll be done. So, just wrapping this one up, I took it for another test drive just now after that brake bleed, and it's yeah, it's helped a lot. The pedal's a lot taller, um, the woodiness is gone, the brake performance is much better than it was. Uh, I think it's probably about where it should be for a car of this age with such a poor performing brake system <laughs> drum rears and not that there's anything particularly wrong with drum rears on a light car like this um, but the rotors and pad combination I think it's about as good as you can expect um, so yeah it's all good and that's me for tonight see you next week